Hi, I'm Robin Adams from Abandoned Republic. Welcome to my collection room. Let's take a look inside my cabinet and see what we can find. take a look at the first Banana Republic catalog, catalog number one, which came out in the winter of 1978. Now most of us are familiar with the Banana Republic catalog as a full color, fully illustrated product catalog. Full color did not come in until 1984. The catalog that most of us are familiar with came out between 1984 and 1988. But before that, there were nearly 20 black and white catalogs produced. Let's take a look at the first one. It's incredibly rare to see a copy of catalog number one in any condition at all, much less as nice as this one is. I got this copy from a Banana Republic employee who had a nearly complete collection of catalogs, including all of the black and white catalogs. So it was quite a find. This was produced in the winter of 1978 and the cover is a duotone, which means it's printed in black and sienna for the spots. On the cover, we see the, the address, 76 East Blytheville, Mill Valley, California. Hey, the phone number, 415-383-4900. I love this diplomatic pouch. Brand new rough hewn cotton bag is guaranteed to command respect at any border. Has embroidered red, yellow, and green official Banana Republic emblem and adjustable shoulder strap. This would be an amazing thing to find. It's the very first catalog. It's the very first piece of Banana Republic swag. It's everything. I would kill to have one of these in any condition. The Andalusian militia vest. 100% cotton militia vest from the south of Spain, warm and stylish. We've added asymmetrical sh rifle shoulder and other leather reinforcement. Roomy front pockets for wallet or weapon. Perfect to kept, keep chest warm and arms free while hiking or cruising on bikes or in sports cars. Excellent, vintage, original condition, rugged and original. Very cool. And then, of course, the pith helmet from Her Majesty's former burden. Not the first time that we will use that phrase. The colony of India comes this genuine Bombay bowler. Half-inch pith covered with water-repellent tan cotton. New puggery band. Chin strap. Yes, indeed. And over here we have an interview with Patricia Gwilliam. Gwilliam was Patricia Ziegler's maiden name. Are the clothes new or used? Both. Many are new. The governments were stockpiling them for wars that never occurred. The only used clothes we import are the ones in top condition. And even then we clean, press, size, and totally restore them. Everything is guaranteed unconditionally, of course. The creme de la creme are the things that we remake. We do this when we find terrific fabrics going to waste in useless military form. I take the fabric and use it to make my own classic designs. For instance, vests from gorgeous white wool Chanel in surplus Arctic pant liners, shirts from mosquito nets, purses from satin quilted firefighter coat liners, and so on. Everything is sewn by a cottage industry of seamstresses who take such pride in their work that they sign these garments. These limited editions, unique and a bit idiosyncratic, are perfect for people who like to make a quietly elegant statement against the waste on this planet. Now that is fascinating. I had never noticed that detail before where she says that the garments are actually signed by the person who modified them. 
that would be an amazing fun thing to find. That would be really interesting. I'm so curious about that. Were they signed on the clothing or was it on a tag or what was going on? Who knows? Here we see the Ice Age wool shirt jacket, an olive green knit wool scarf, and a mosquito net shirt. The Italian camouflage jacket, ivory safari vest, jungle hat, and a tropical tie. High fashion from the Yankee Navy in the surplus black 45% wool, 55% poly tropical tie. Measures a chic two inches wide. <clears throat> the Spanish paratrooper shirt dress. Now this is a favorite. This is an important item. Um, you see down here the short arm safari shirt. Now this is the very famous story about they bought a bulk surplus selection of these Spanish paratrooper shirts only to discover that the sleeves were really, really short. So they made up a story saying that um, the result of Franco's maniacal refusal to permit long armed Spaniards into the officer's corps. So then they took two of these shirts and sewed them together to make a safari shirt dress, which I think is really brilliant. And so that's the first safari shirt dress and one of many that Banana Republic would produce. Fascinated by the black satin quilted handbag that are made from the linings of French firefighter coats. Very interesting. Um, a lot of great stuff on this page. Blurb contest. Send us a blurb inspired by our merchandise. If we use it in the next catalog, you get $5 in authentic banana bread. So here we have a safari khaki skirt. Let's see, what does it say about that? Made from new khaki military shirts, the epaulets become the waistbands. These safari skirts are perfect for all around wear. Now that's just amazing to me that they're buying, you know, bulk military shirts and converting them into dresses, like by hand. That's incredible. And that's the origins of Banana Republic for you. We see the Banana Republic t-shirt, the very first one. Stage your coup in a t-shirt in t-shirt Babylon by wearing an official Banana Republic t-shirt replete with our red and green coat of arms or er, bananas. We'll show people where you really come from. As well as a Banana Republic baseball cap. Oh my God. I would die to add that to my collection. There's also a Banana Republic backpack. Basically anything that they could sew their insignia onto, they went for it. And then we have a authentic safari ascot designed to be U.S. infantry scarves, but never used. These snap-on treasures make elegant safari ascots for those who like the panache of a scarf, but not the bother of tying it. Mm -hmm. Here on the back, we have the Minister of Finance checkbook cover and a portrait of the Minister of Finance, courtesy of the banana bread, which is their gift certificate currency. In the order form, you put in your credit card number or you call on the telephone. A little sizing information. Finally, the back of catalog number one features this wonderful cartoon by Patricia Ziegler, actually by Patricia Gwilliam, her uh, maiden name. And it talks about searching the world for surplus goods and then refashioning them into new clothing through an army of uh, industrious seamstresses. The most interesting thing to me on the back of this is it says that they sewed in a label that said remade in the Banana Republic. So it's possible that if you're looking for something that's truly vintage coming from catalog number one, that it would have that tag in it which is a very interesting clue, because otherwise I don't know how you would identify it as Banana Republic, for sure. Because I don't know if they were putting other Banana Republic labels in their clothing at that time or not. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this look at the catalog. 
and it's my very first video, so thanks for watching, and we'll try it again another time.